Hi, for this video, what I want to do is show you how to find the z-score given the area um, using Excel. So this is a pretty simple process. The one thing that you do have to keep in mind is that Excel only gives the cumulative area to the left. So you always have to think in terms of all of the situations, what is the area that's actually shaded to the left? So the first one, this is the easiest one to do because it is area to the left. So we're trying to find a z-score that corresponds to an area to the left of 0.1562. So all you need to do is grab Excel, and then you're going to type in equals and start typing norm, and you'll see norm.s.inv. The S stands for the um, standard normal distribution, so you can use this when you are looking for z-scores. And so you can just select that, and then it'll ask for the probability. The probability is the same thing as the area. So I would just put in the 0 0.1562 and hit enter and that gives you your answer. So the z-score would be approximately negative 1.01. Okay, um, with this we tend to round z-scores by default to two decimal places unless the third one is around five. So like if it's um, point, if this third decimal place was a five, then it's best to round to three. But otherwise, by default, we round to two decimal places for z-scores. All right, for the next one, we have to think about it in terms of area to the left, okay? Um, if I plugged in the 0.1762, that is gonna give me a negative z-score because it's less than 50%. But we're obviously looking for a positive z-score because we have only 0.1762 area to the right of this z-score. So what we need to do is we need to do, uh, we need to find the area to the left by doing one minus the area to the right. Okay, and you don't actually have to find this, you can use Excel to find this, but the area to the left is always one minus the area to the right, so we can just plug that value in. So if we just select on the inverse norm again, if you want, you can just keep working with this, and we would just do one minus 0.1762, okay. And then when you hit enter, it does give you your z-score, and we would round this again to two decimal places, and we would get approximately 0 0.93. So our z-score would be 0 0.93. Like I said, if you're getting this wrong, check to make sure that you did do area to the left. If you would have just put in the point 1762, you would have got the negative z-score of 0.93, um, and that's because the area to the left of the negative z-score is the same as the area to the right of the positive z-score. So you could have just put in that value and then reported the opposite z-score, so that would also give you the same answer. All right, the last one that we're going to look at is the area between is 86%. That means that this area right here is 0.86 as a decimal. Remember that the entire area under the curve is one. So each of these tails is equal to half of one minus the area between. Okay, um, so we would always do one half times one minus the area between. And so in this case, we would do 0.86. You can plug it in like that, or if you wanted to, you could do the math. So if you wanted to, um, you could go ahead and simplify this, and 1 minus 0.86 would give us 0.14, and then half of that would be 0 0.07. So you have two choices for this. Actually, you have more than that, um, but you would just type in, I could type in the 0.07, and I would get negative 1.46, uh, sorry, negative 1.476. I'm gonna go ahead and round that up to negative 1.48. And then the positive z-score is just going to be the opposite sign. Okay, so we would just report it as negative 1.48 and positive 1.48. So looking at this, if you didn't want to do the math, I could have also typed in here um, one half, which is the same thing as 0.5 times, and then I could have put in the parentheses 
one minus 0.86. So if it's a little bit harder, like it has um, four decimal places or something and you don't want to do the math in your head, you can also just plug in the formula itself and it would give you the same answer. As far as the positive z-score, you would have to do one minus this value. Um, I just find it's easier to find the negative z-score and then also report the positive z-score. So anytime it asks for area between, the z-scores are going to be opposites of, of I'm sorry, opposites of each other. And so you would find the negative first and then just also report the positive. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you would like me to cover, please let me know that as well.